Um, I want to talk to you guys about division and a strategy that we're going to be using in my classroom. It's called the partial quotients method and I wanted to show you guys a step-by-step -step tutorial so you're familiar with the strategies that your child are doing in class. So here we go. We have 2,375 divided by 5. If I look at the first part of my number for this 2, you can't make a group of 5 out of 2 so I'm going to look at 23. Well, I'm going to think about my multiplication facts and think about my 5s and think, okay, What's the closest multiple of 5 to 23? Okay, well, I think it's 20. And 20 is the fourth multiple. 5 times 4 is 20. But I have these extra spaces right here, and I'm going to fill them in with zeros. I filled in two zeros here, so I'm filling two zeros in here. And this will be familiar to our kids because we've already talked about multiplying multiples of 10. If 5 times 4 is 20, then 5 times 400 is 2,000. And we're discussing how division is repeated subtraction. So my next step is to subtract, and I get 375. So now I'm still going to look at the first two numbers, and I have 37. Well, which multiple of 5 is closest to 37? Well, that's 35, and that is the seventh multiple. Fill in a 0, fill in a 0. Subtract. So 5 minus 0 is 5. 7 minus 5 is 2. Well, 25 is a multiple of 5, and it is the fifth multiple. 5 times 5 is 25. I subtract. I have 0, so that means I'm done. There's no remainder in this problem. And these are my partial quotients. And to find a total quotient, I just combine them. I add them. 400 plus 70 plus 5 is 470. I saw some similarities between the partial quotients method and the standard algorithm. This is the standard algorithm, or the traditional way, and this is my partial quotients method. I'm favorable to this, and I want you to just look at these two pieces of paper real quick and see the similarities. Now, I know this is a lot quicker to the answer than this, but what you have to realize is that when I have 46 students, they are all thinking at different speeds. Now, my students that are more familiar with their math facts, they're going to get to this answer faster. But what I like about the partial quotients method, let's say they're just really don't want to bother with any regrouping that might reoccur when they subtract. It's really easy to subtract hundreds and thousands. And division is repeated subtraction. So they just want to do 5 times 200 is 1,000 because it's easy. And it may take more steps, but I can still get to my quotient. When you're dealing with a standard algorithm, there's no room for variety. There's no room for mistakes. Every problem has to be worked out the exact same way or you're not going to get to your final answer. And honestly, this is very similar to this, but since this leaves a little wiggle room, I like it better because my kids don't have to remember to bring down a number. They don't lose any numbers in the process because I'm subtracting zeros. I'm multiplying by powers of 10. So I hope this video was informative and I hope you feel better about the partial quotients method. It is my favorite method and I have taught both before, but I feel like my students have a way better number sense and I think that will set them up for success in their later years in math because they're not just learning steps. They're not just learning that a four goes up here they're learning that it's 400 groups of 5 that equals 2,000. So they're understanding the meanings behind why these numbers are written there. And I just think it's great. And if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. I'd be glad to answer them. Thanks.